Twelve thirty-one. Steven, you're up. Yeah, you're meeting. Joe pops on and we can hear him. He's still connecting. Oh, I didn't see Joe. Joe, are you there? Are you connected? Donna's on mute still. Can you guys hear me? Yep, Donna, we can hear you, Joe. Donna, right, can so, you hear Donna, can you hear us? Just give us a thumbs up. You're on mute. You're on mute. So just give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. Okay. okay. So I kind of just wanted to get this out to all of you prior to the soccer season starting at Percival Soccer next Thursday. Um, we had great, the construction went really well. Project seemed to be going fabulous. We wrapped up construction last November. We opened the field in April for a few weeks, maybe the beginning part of May. Um, we just had a little bit of issues with the field not drying out and kind of staying wet just right on the surface layer just because of the roots. Based on the we did and then so put your stuff on mute joe i'm trying <laughs> okay so then throughout the course of the summer um we had we had a site we had u.s pitch care came out they did a fertilized application they burnt three or four good sections of the new sod on the field we had them come back and repair it. When they came back and repaired it, we ran the irrigation probably twice a day for somewhere around 20 minutes to make sure we didn't lose the new sod. During that time and over the next three weeks that ensued after that, we picked up just over seven inches of rain. And with the seven inches of rain and the pitch of the field, the water just ran to the sides. And when this water got to the sides, it had nowhere to go but to build back up to itself and kind of create like a moat which then made the field, you couldn't walk on the field, you couldn't do anything on the field, and it just would not dry out. So we started to investigate like, hey, what possibly could have caused this? What's going on? Um, more along the lines of we hit the, I hit the panic button of trying to really get a grasp on what was going on. And we reached out to uh, Jason Henderson from UConn, US Pitch Care, our architect, and um, Peter Gorman, our fertilizers, fertilizer and soil expert, through the town that we use as our contractual services through Atlantic Turf and Golf. That all being said, um, currently right now the field is playable. The field is lined. It's ready for the soccer season. Just we don't know what's going to happen once we get another two inches of rain. We don't know if we're going to be back into the same predicament where the water's not percolating into the ground. We went out there, we aerated it, which is solid time. We go down about four inches and we sh it shakes, it shatters. It tries to break the compaction of the field up. Yesterday, we had another company out there. And they did some split time coloration where they go down around three and a half inches. It puts giant holes into the field to try to give the water and area, water in the air a place to go to try to establish some roots. Um, tomorrow at 1.30, we're meeting out there with um, Dr. Henderson, uh, Tom Linden, Jen, and Peter Gorman to see if there's something possibly going on with the soil where the soil just isn't absorbing the water the way it should be. Um, we believe there is a compaction issue where the field is just overly compacted from the bulldozers, the heavy equipment and everything that's going on during construction, especially with the amount of rain we had at the end of the year. So then our next step is, I would imagine Jason is gonna take some soil samples some soil analysis and then go back from it. We're hoping that the beginning part of next meet week, we are going to meet out with the contractor, U.S. Pitch Care, and Tom Linden to come up exactly with what is the problem, why the field is acting the way that it's acting, why the water is not making it to the drain, um, where, where the field sh sheds off, it should be definitely making it to the drain. So there's a lot of moving parts, but what I did not want to happen is I didn't want us to pick up two inches of rain next Monday, and all of a sudden on Thursday, the field's not playable, and then you guys are getting phone calls or you're at the local watering hole and someone says, hey, Donna, you know, by the way, why did we spend a half a million dollars on Percival and it's unusable? I didn't want to reach out to the McGee Middle School and say, hey, by the way, we're having some problems. So we, Jen and I, thought it was best to bring all of this information to you guys just so we could answer any technical question that we know or we don't know. Um, and this is going to be a moving puzzle probably for the next six weeks. Um, it could be something as easy as the aeration that we did solved the problem. 
we are well aware that we need to add another drain to the field and have already came up with a price and a contractor to add a drain along the town hall side, I call it, which abuts Marjorie more, just because of this, there's just too much shade there and the water's not drying, but we don't know why the right side of the field along the backside of Beretta, that drain is not working. And we are going to do everything we can to come up with the answers and get as much information to you guys as fast as we can. Seems like hey, Steve. Hot... Steve, it's Greg. So yeah. when I was out there the other day, um, if you look from the north end of the field to the south end of the field on the um, uh, the Marjorie Moore side, it looks like there are two lines. If you look at them, maybe about, I don't know, 20, 30 feet apart that run north south there. And it looks like it's like dead grass or but it's like in a straight line, like there's some some issue. I don't know what it is, but I mean, it's darker than the rest of the sod. Yes, correct. So what that is, is the contract U.S. Pitch Care, US pitch care improperly applied some chemicals, forgot to turn the PTO on, and killed the grass. They've U.S. Pitch Care has already claimed ownership on that. They've already been out there to fix it. Um, they will continue to work on that, so that problem is rectified. Okay, thank you. So with regular rain, it really doesn't affect, it, it's not affecting you. You're just worried mostly about those heavy-duty downpour things that we've gotten this year, right? I'm more worried about what, the problem didn't show up until we had seven inches of rain in three or four days. But yeah. now we've had the seven inches of rain between those three or four days. If you took, if you can imagine water on a bowl, the, the water hit the top of the bowl and it ran off. Well, then put two walls here and then the water starts to come back up. And that's kind of where we're stuck. So if you walk the center of the field and you walk 40 yards to your right and 30 yards to your left, you're going to see the giant difference in the amount of water that's draining and percolating off the field where the water should just sheathe evenly across the field. And the water on the Marjorie Moore side should have gone out towards Marjorie Moore. And the water on the left side should have gone down into the valley and into the drain pipe. And the drain pipe is located. And if you guys go out there and look at it, the drain pipe is located where you see three surveyor stakes. And they're yep. located pretty much by the irrigation boxes. That's where the drain is. The drain is not the swale where it comes off the hill from Beretta, where you see the catch basin that's constructed on both ends of the field. The, the drain is actually more on the field, closer to the irrigation box. So we don't know. We don't know how it's going to perform. We're hoping that hoping that the cultural practices that we've been trying to do over the last three weeks are going to give us enough playability to make it through a good portion of the season until we can come up with the final way that we're going to rectify it. I don't hey, know Steve. if you can answer this question, but just quick concern. Seven inches of rain over the course of three or four days. I, I mean, I consider that to be uncharacteristic of what we would typically see. Is that, and I suspect you don't keep track of like rainfall on a daily basis, but is that kind of a fair statement that that kind of rainfall is very, very uncommon. Well, here's how uncharacteristic seven inches of rain is. And yes, especially during August. Um, we currently right now, and I'll go through all the fields, left field at Hubbard, you can't even walk by the left field foul pole because it's so wet we can't mow it. Dennehy Field, we're having the same problem. Centerelli Field and left field of Centerelli Field as well, we can't walk it. If you go behind the goalpost at Soccer West, we've now moved the field. You can't walk it. So we have several places already that this amount of rain that we've had this summer is making fields unplayable. And it's not like it's the middle of the summer where everything's going to have a chance to dry out. It, it's not. And, we're, and, you know, with more rain in the forecast, yes, it's only going to be an inch over the next couple of days. But I think this problem and the way the weather panel is, pattern is changing is we're going to continue to have wet, soggy fields that are not going to perform, which is going to cause me a lot of gray air and you guys a lot of stress from Taxpayers and citizens being like, hey, why can't I use this field? Or why can't I use that field? No, nope, hey, Steve, it's, thank you. Thank you. For hey, that. Steve, it's, yeah, it's Greg. Um, so, to the point of back at Percival on the Mar Marjorie Moore side, that side of the field from the uh, touch line back to the where the, the, the benches are was the, the longest area to dry out last year or in the spring. 
you know, I'm sure you probably know that, but I mean, I'm talking about gushy, you know, underneath the grass where coaches are getting their, their soccer shoes and the kids are getting their soccer shoes wet. So I'm sure it's an issue that's been ongoing and you kind of identified that. So maybe all that in the drain will help. Correct. No, nope, that's the, all those are identified. All those are identified. And what, what's happening there is we believe that the water as it is off the field is coming to where the, I call it the, the ledge where we went from native soil to modified soil that once the water hits the native soil, the water is stopping there because it's all clay, like the field used to be, and it's backing up. And th there's no way for us to dry that until we get into a dry enough span to put a 300 yard, 300 foot drain down the whole entire field. Yep. All right. I mean, so you're meeting, you're meeting next week. Yeah. Go ahead, Donna. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're meeting next week now with all the players. You'll have something after that, and then do you want to give us an update, or do what do you, what? What's your thought? Like when our, our thought process is this: T tomorrow we're going to have the group of people there. We're going to discuss things. We would like to schedule something the following week with all of the players. We would like to have a strong stance with all of the players put them on warning, give them a definitive deadline to get back to us with a resolution yeah. and bring it back to you guys when we have a better idea. Yeah, that makes sense. There's, a, I assume there's some type of warranty with the contractor that depending on the issue, I guess that's. Yeah, we're, the other day. We're kind of, yeah, we've been looking at the contract. We've been looking at the bid bond and everything. So. Okay, all right, good. Okay, I think, you know, we, there's no sense getting everybody alarmed until you know a little bit more and then we find out and see what happens and however, if you need to communicate with us, we can all jump on a call again uh, to give us an update. Yeah, know, and we will probably move forward to set up a meeting with John Riley to give him a heads up going into the season. We just didn't want to do that till we gave you guys the heads up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll probably, we'll probably try to present, depending on what we find, we, i well, I want to present something to the council on September 3rd of kind of like what we found and what's going on this way. They're in the loop as well. Um, so. Sounds good. Right. Sounds like you guys are right on top of it. So yep. thank you for the yeah. info. Yeah. Thanks for the info. Thanks for being Thanks here. For the heads up. If, if we do find something, if I find something out that I think all of you need to know, I will just give you all a call. Yeah, please. Yeah. Much yeah. appreciate it. Because if my sausage is trying to type, it'll probably take like 10 years. So, <laughs> all right. Have a good day, everybody. Thank, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.